My name is Justin and I've never done this before, but I'm gonna repurpose these speakers into a new cabinet. Get rid of this old one because it smells like cat pee. So the first thing of course was to remove the old speaker components from the speaker case. Then remove the connector parts. These original connectors are for cable ends that look like this. However, the only amp that I have has quarter inch cables that look like this, so I need to re-solder quarter inch connectors so that I can use it in my current setup. So I used my solder kit that I got at Radio Shack, which was 50% off because they were going out of business. May they rest in peace. Desoldered the ends and then reattached to the new quarter inch connectors that I got on Amazon. Not a sponsor. Thankfully, the negative end, or as the boys on Reddit say, the cold wire, snapped pretty snugly into place and then it was a quick solder for the positive or hot end. Also, this is only like the second thing I've ever soldered in my whole life, so don't judge my soldering abilities. Although advice in the comments is welcome. Then plug it in for a quick test and... Ha! It works. All right, so now for the actual speaker cabinet assembly. Uh, online, I found a few pre-made kits that you can buy uh, and assemble them, but that's no fun. While I was doing that, I also noticed that most speaker cabinets are some version of a square or rectangle. Uh, however, the actual drivers are round, so I thought it might be fun to go that route and look for a round enclosure. I found a few examples of people using cement pillar molds for a sub speaker, which could work, but then I came across this, and that's pretty genius. So this is actually a microphone called a sub kick. They use it for drums and, well, just look it up if you're interested. Anyway, I like this idea. Let's give it a try. So here we go. I found two drum toms for 40 bucks. I figured cheaper would be better because probably I'd end up destroying them. So assembly was a little bit of a head scratcher because I wanted to leave as much of the drum intact as I could. The best solution I could think of was to use the existing hardware. So the drum has five of these brackets. Each bracket has screws going through the middle, so I removed the original screw, replaced it with a longer screw. That way I could fit a piece of plywood on the inside of each bracket. This is just scrap plywood that I had from a previous project. Basically, this will allow me to attach the speaker directly to the drum, and from the outside, the drum will look untouched. It'll just look like a normal tom. Unfortunately though, and go figure, the holes on the speaker did not line up with the plywood brackets that I just put. But I had the idea to use the original cabinet mold. Cut that out, which gave me this. It wouldn't fit, so I did some sanding, some cutting, Finally got it to fit, and I had a nice, perfectly sized shelf to uh, screw the speaker into. Looks pretty nice. Now I needed to figure out how to attach the other speakers to this one. I did a few drawings to get some ideas and decided to go with this one. With design more or less planned out, it was time to move on to the mid speaker, which was also round, so I figured let's keep the pattern going. I couldn't find any drum small enough to fit the mid speaker, but six inch diameter PVC pipe from Home Depot, that'll do it. I thought the easiest way to attach it would be to use a PVC end cap. I needed to cut a hole in it for the speaker to fit, but I don't have a saw or blade to cut that precise of a circle, so I resorted to drilling about 1,000 tiny holes. Then I popped it out and... So this version of the mid speaker is actually the second draft. I redid it this way after I had almost assembled everything. So from here on out, you'll actually see the mid speaker in its first draft, but in the final assembly, you'll see it put together this way. Just wanna clarify that in case you're wondering why things are different later on. So for the tweeter, it's already a rectangle. No sense in really changing that. So I just glued some quarter inch strips of wood into a frame added some weights on it, and then watched it dry. I also glued in two little uh, nubs in the corner so that I could screw the speaker in. Looking good. Nearing the home stretch now, again using the existing hardware. I hung it up to get a better look to make sure this was the design I wanted to use. And yeah, a little tentative, yeah, but let's do it. After mounting it like this, I thought it would be neat to hang it to the wall like this using the Tom hardware. Then I can hang the mid in the tweeter directly from the drum. After a quick scrounge to Home Depot, I found this. Electrical conduit. It's 
perfect because it's hollow, so the wires will pass through, so it'll look clean from the outside. Now to just line things up and start drilling. Seems legit, right? Yeah, sure. Assembled everything quickly just to see how it looked. I'm liking it so far. Picked the paint color and painted. Now to put all the wiring in. Final assembly, and here we are. I'm honestly pretty impressed with how this turned out. First of all, it works, which is a plus, and I think it looks pretty cool too. Now for the mounting mechanism, shelving brackets from Home Depot, got some galvanized plumbing parts, some washers and a nut to hold that, that, hold that into place, three inch galvanized steel pipe. Oh, also uh, a half inch width pipe fit perfect for the original Tom brackets. Put it into place, plug it in. Success. Now for a sound test. The only problem is with YouTube, stuff's gonna get flagged, so I'm not gonna play that. However, I do have a song on Spotify that I can play because I'm not gonna sue myself. Convenient. And here you go. It works. This is just the speaker from my phone. Nothing fantastic, but it works. Sounds pretty good to my ears. Also, I'm well aware if you're an audiophile, there's a lot of stuff with position in the room and the size of the speaker compared to the driver and the shape and all that. But right now I just need something that works and this serves that purpose. And I know I'm probably sacrificing sound quality for aesthetic, but at this point budget wise and coolness factor, I'm totally happy with this. Well, that's it for this episode. My name is Justin, I build custom speaker. I've done that before.